my friends, uh, it's me again. Um, my name is Dylan and I am 32 years old from the Chicago South Suburbs. And um, for those of you who are new that are just tuning in, thank you so much. Um, today is September 12th, 2021. And I am one year and six months post-op from pudendal nerve decompression surgery. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, p the pudendal nerve is the main nerve in the pelvis that arise, arises from sacral nerve roots 2, 3, and 4. And it controls uh, a lot of your pelvic floor, bladder, bowel, genitals, um, and all that kind of stuff. Um, for seven years, I battled with very, very, very specific left-sided neuropathic pain, stabbing, stinging, shooting in that area, and it was a living nightmare. Um, pudendal neuralgia is no joke. Um, everybody presents a little bit differently in terms of what their main symptoms are, depending on which branch of the nerve is affected. Um, my pain started very, very early in childhood. I could never articulate what was going on. Um, I just sort of lived with it and it remained mostly the same until 2013. Um, I had a lot going on then. I had a major pelvic floor muscle spasm that sent um, my whole body into a tailspin. And um, after that uh, muscle spasm, I was left with left-sided, very, very neuropathic specific pain. Prior to that, it was more um, benign, uh, widespread pain, uh, general uh, bladder urethra pain and then after 2013 it turned into a very very specific per nerve pain um, I did everything in terms of treatment I did medication I did diet changes I did lifestyle changes I tried injections in different areas to rule out sources of pain um, I got MRIs, several MRIs in various parts of my body to rule out anything contributing to the pain I spent seven years in physical therapy, pelvic floor physical therapy, on and off to try to treat um, the symptoms. Um, I also tried um, non-traditional uh, acupuncture, herbs, you name it. I've tried it. Um, I've tried different diets that are to eliminate, uh, rule out food issues and everything like that. Um, I, I did Botox to the pelvic floor, which helps with muscle spasms. And um, all of these were very temporary treatment procedures. Um, the steroid nerve injections that I did um, lasted for a little while, and then they would wear off very quickly. And I was back to the stinging and stabbing pain. Um, I held down a full-time job until late 2019 when I just couldn't take it anymore. Um, driving was very, very, very difficult and still is very, very difficult for me um, because I have to not only be in the sitting position, but for me, um, the shaking of the motor uh, sets off the tailbone area pain and it just starts that neuropathic pain and it is very distressing. Um, for those of you who don't really know, um, the pudendal nerve also has autonomic fibers, which means that... Um, it's responsible for involuntary controlled things. Um, so the autonomic nervous system is are things that you don't consciously think about, such as heart rate, uh, temperature regulation, digestion, um, things like that. And it makes sense for the pudendal nerve to have autonomic fibers because you don't want to constantly thinking think about your pelvic floor and your pelvic floor being um, closed to hold in. Um, urine and feces is important. So that's um, that was another very distressing part of this whole thing was that the um, the nerve is very much involved in so many different things and uh, it was taking over my life. And um, I decided to have pudendal nerve decompression surgery with Dr. Michael Hibner in Phoenix, Arizona. And I was originally supposed to have surgery in February. Um, however, I kind of put it off a little bit. Um, 
So I made the decision to have the surgery because I had pretty much exhausted all of my other options in terms of treating that nerve and that nerve was not getting any better. Um, and I decided that I did not want to live my life wondering um, if I had a nerve entrapment and there's really no good way to see if you have a nerve entrapment. They're getting better and better with imaging as time goes on. Um, they have a thing called um, magnetic resonance neurography, which can see more soft tissue and nerves a little bit better. Um, certain doctors don't really uh, have an agreement on whether or not this imaging is effective. Um, however, it's just another thing that some people do to try and see if they can um, come to a consensus on where their nerve is impinged. For me, I had scar tissue pretty much along the entire course of the nerve. Um, the reason that the surgery is so controversial is um, many people think that, um, for, well, first of all, there's no guarantee that it's going to help. Um, it, cre it possibly can create more scar tissue um, in other areas of the pelvis. So that's the other thing, but it's pretty much a, a last resort surgery. I left myself with one more option just in case the surgery didn't work. Um, I want to try a neuro uh, spinal cord stimulator, which is a little device that they implant inside of you um, with two leads and um, you do a trial run prior to having it surgically implanted. And so I left myself with that option in the future in case um, this surgery, you know, wasn't entirely successful. Now. The million dollar question is, how are you doing, Dylan, after the surgery? Are you feeling any better? Um, I get asked that question about 100 times a day, and unfortunately, the answer is, yes, I'm better, but no, I'm not better. So for me, having the pedundal decompression surgery opened up a whole different can of worms. Um, Prior to surgery, I did not realize that I have a connective tissue called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is very common, but it is not widely studied nor understood, and there's not a lot of awareness. Um, connective to having a connective tissue disorder predisposes you to so many different comorbidities, um, including but not limited to neuropathic pain and entrapments. So um, a lot of people with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome have neuropathic pain. It's oftentimes diagnosed as uh, fibromyalgia or complex regional pain syndrome. And a lot of times these nerve entrapments are in other areas of the body. They're not, the pudendal nerve is not a nerve that people talk about because it's very highly stigmatized. No one wants to talk about the pelvis or the genitals or the rectum or the bladder because it's really embarrassing and there's not a lot of people who are owning it. It's a part of your body just like any other part of your body. It can get injured. There's connective tissue in your pelvis that can get um, pushed and pulled. Um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a connective tissue disorder in which there is uh, a genetic component. The most common type, they are not sure which genes are involved, so there's no genetic test. The other types have genetic testing. Um, I think in the next 20 years that they're going to discover that there's a lot more genes um, involved in EDS. Um, everybody's going to have a different genetic profile. Everybody's going to have a different mutation. Um, the collagen production cycle um, on a physiological level involves a lot of genes. And there's not going to be just one magic bullet uh, gene that people with EDS have issues with. Um, there's collagen, you know, production and synthesis. There's the collagen molecules themselves. Um, I did genetic testing with Invite uh, to rule out uh, six out of the 14 types, 13 or 14, there's a debate in the community on how many types there are. And I found um, a mutation of unknown significance uh, with one of the genes involved. However, uh, they claim it's not disease causing, but that's only because they don't have enough research out at this time. Um, so that's where I'm at. Um, having pedundal uh, nerve decompression surgery opened up a huge door for me. I have jumped into the Ehlers-Danlos community. 
I've met so many great people along my journey. I've met more and more people who have pudendal neuralgia um, and Ehlers-Danlos. And um, that's a, a comorbidity that many people don't talk about. Um, it's widely known that ED, people with EDS have a lot of pelvic issues. However, in terms of specific ailments like pudendal nerve decompression surgery and entrapment, I think needs to be talked about a lot more. Um, the other thing I discovered in October of 2020 was that um, I have multiple vascular compression syndromes, May Turner syndrome, Nutcracker syndrome, and pelvic congestion syndrome. These are veins um, along in the body uh, that are not getting sufficient uh, blood flow because they are physically compressed due to one reason or another, uh, mostly probably because the organs are getting pushed and pulled and connective tissue that surrounds my organs are getting pushed and pulled inappropriately due to my Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So um, there's really no good treatment for these vascular compressions other than putting stents and having surgery. Um, I was stented on my left side um, in my iliac vein where I was 74% 70 compressed. And um, the other thing is they, there's, like I said before, there's really no good treatments that are guaranteed to work with these conditions. So it's pretty much just lifestyle modification at this point. Um, I'm in the process of undergoing, um, trying to claim social security disability. It's a very lengthy process. Social security disability is one of the most ruthless systems in America. And it takes many years sometimes to get coverage. Um, my suggestion is for anybody who is trying, who has a chronic illness, who is trying to get social security disability, as soon as you get your denial letter, obtain a lawyer. Um, there's little, there's next to no chance of getting approved without a lawyer. Um, and a lot of times the comorbidities that people have are not recognized by social, social security. So you need somebody to represent you in a way that fits into their specific criteria in terms of um, who qualifies. So that's where I'm at in my journey right now. Um, I still have a really bad neuropathic pain um, with the left side pudendal nerve at times. However, the thing that I, d I have noticed is that um, it is not as consistent and constant as it, as it once was. Um, after my pudendal decompression surgery, the main thing that changed for me was all of my other symptoms, like my vascular symptoms and my symptoms of dysautonomia, uh, chronic fatigue, um, you know, just dizziness, fainting, um, abdomen pain, uh, leg issues, uh, muscle spasming in other parts of my body um, worsened a lot. So having decompression surgery for me uncovered the real issue. Um, for a lot of other people uh, are not as fortunate to get the answer that I did. Um, I wish it would have came, would not have come at such a high cost um, but my take home message for people who are considering decompression surgery is to rule out systemic issues, get DNA tested, um, rule out connective tissue disorder, rule out digestive disorders, rule out vascular disorders, rule out other disorders that can manifest in other areas of your body, not just pelvic pain. Think outside the box. Um, I, I am very thankful to have so many supporters sliding into my DMs and sending me messages on Prosebox and Facebook and Instagram and all that. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions, specific questions that anybody has about the surgery itself. Um, it is very complicated surgery. I, uh, I think, uh, whatever powers to be up there, God, gods, whatever you believe in, um, that I had the best surgeon in America to do my surgery. Um, I think Europe is a little bit well, a little bit better versed in pedendal decompression surgery. They're, they have a couple different surgical options, including laparoscopic surgery. Whereas in the USA, it's very common to, to only have the transgluteal option. However, I think uh, other doctors and other options are opening up as time goes on. Um, so that's my journey. That's my um, 
my story in a nutshell, the short version. Um, I'm at 15 minutes with the short version. I could definitely tell the long version that would take five hours, but this is me one year and six months post-op. I never thought I would get to this point. Um, it seems like it's been forever. Um, if you have the surgery, allow yourself at least two to three years to even feel remotely like you felt prior to surgery. It is a long and grueling recovery, um, especially for someone with a connective tissue disorder. People with connective tissue disorders take twice the amount of time as normal people to heal from any surgery, not just pudendal decompression. And pudendal decompression surgery is a very invasive surgery. So think before you do it, get your information on the doctors, get the information on the surgical, surgical approach, get the information on the recovery time and make sure you have a financial and a financial plan of action and a support system on your side to recover from this surgery. That's it. I'm signing out and I will talk to you guys in another six months.